What's up everyone, welcome back to another review. This time we're taking a look at Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the third installment into the Indiana Jones franchise. And to me, the Last Crusade is my favorite of the original three Indiana Jones movies. Now, I think Indiana Jones, the Last Crusade, fixes a lot of the problems I've had with the Temple of Doom. It takes the movies back to the spirit of that first movie. It has a sense of fun. This movie has a sense of fun to it. It has a sense of adventure to it. Not only that, this movie gives us the inclusion of Sean Connery as Henry Jones Sr., Indiana Jones' father. And <clears throat> right off the bat, before I get started with anything else, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery were made for one another. These two have impeccable chemistry as father and son. Harrison Ford's Indiana Jones works so well off Sean Connery's Henry Jones Sr., and their chemistry is just impeccable. You would have never thought that Ford and Connery would have such great on-screen on chemistry with one another. I buy these two as father and son. They work so well off one another. Their scenes are just hilarious with one another. The humor is great. You know, Henry Jones Sr. has got that, has got that, uh, has got that uh, fun, adventurous type of humor to him to counteract Ford's more gruffer, edgier humor with, with Indiana Jones. Like I said, the chemistry between these two is phenomenal. And this movie really needed an actor that can fill the shoes of Henry Jones Sr. And Sean Connery did that excellently. Nothing bad to say about Sean Connery as Henry Jones Sr. He's fantastic. The comedic scenes are great for one another, and their dramatic scenes are just as good. Especially the scene where, where Henry thinks that Indiana Jones, you know, dies. Great scene. And when Henry Jones on his death is, is almost dead himself. Fantastic stuff. Great stuff. I love it. Now that I got that out of the way, let's actually talk about The Last Crusade. So pretty much the story of this movie is Indiana Jones is on the look, is on the hunt to find the Holy Grail, which will give you eternal life. That's so this movie is very uh, heavy in terms of its Christian iconography and and things like that. So <clears throat> again, goes back to the spirit of the first movie where it's a religious type of deal. You know, the first movie had the Ark of the Covenant. This movie now has the, the Holy Grail. And Indy's trek to get the Holy Grail is, is fun. It's great stuff. You know, Denim Elliott returns as, Mar as Marcus Brody and Denim Elliott as Marcus Brody, he has he actually has an active role in this movie. He actually tags along with Indy to find the Holy Grail. And I'm so glad about that and I like that because we get to see more of Marcus Brody and we get to see Denim Elliott's comedic chops. And Denim Elliott, he's really, really funny. Um, I love the scenes with Elliott and Sala when, when Sala gets introduced in this movie, John Reese Davies return. Uh, and that's a really funny scene where uh, Elliot is where uh, more Brody is pretty much almost being manipulated by Nazis to go to a museum and Sala like there's no museum here it's great stuff and I also love the scenes with uh, Marcus and and Henry because you really get the sense that these two have a lifelong friendship and they have a secret handshake which is just really really funny I love it a lot so a plus for the inclusion of Mark for the inclusion of the Marcus Brody character and actually giving him some stuff to do always fun to see John Reese Davies as Sala. He's just as fun as he was in the first movie. He's great as well. Uh, the action sequences in this movie, they're really, really fun. Uh, the boat, the uh, speedboat action sequence is really great. When you have this character called Kazam, who is part of this secret society that is guarding the Holy Grail, he's, that's a fun scene. Uh, if I have uh, any complaints, I think the character of Kazam could have had a little bit more of an active role in this movie. Like, we see him in the boat chase scene, and then we don't see him again until, like, near the end of the movie where he's eventually killed off. But there's a good middle section where his character just completely kind of disappears. I would have liked to have seen him pepper throughout the movie a little bit more. Maybe particularly working with Indy to find the Holy God. Maybe particularly working with Indy in a way. I'm not sure. To do something, to do something with his character, but he's really just there. And he pl kind of plays like a non-factor in a way. But his action sequences with Indy really really fun the whole boat chase sequence <laughs> on in the water is a really fun scene uh the scene where indy is taking on the nazis and he's trying to hang on to like this tank another great scene 
the action sequences in this movie are spectacular. They look great. Steven Spielberg is visual. He is a visually gifted director. He makes he's he's made, he makes his movies look like look so much fun, like like roller coaster rides. That's how good of a, that's how good of a director Steven Spielberg is. He knows how to create that sense of fun and adventure with his action sequences and with his storytelling. And he just has a great cast to round it all out and make it very enjoyable. Uh, the villains in this movie, yes, the Nazis do return, with the two lead villains being the characters of Donovan and this other character called Elsa Schneider. Now, these two villains, they're a step down. <laughs> they're all, they are a step down from uh, Belloc and Molaram. I'm sorry. I still think that Belloc is the is what an Indiana Jones villain should be. Mola Rom is what an Indiana Jones villain has the potential to be. These two, eh, they don't really have anything. There's not really anything to Donovan and Elsa Schneider. Though I do like the idea of Elsa Schneider pretending to be an ally when she's secretly not. She's like an undercover Nazi playing an undercover ally. <clears throat> it's. She's, she's actually got a cool uh, duplicity, dupli duplicity type of character, so that's pretty cool. And the fact that the movie makes hints that she slept with both Henry and Indiana separately, of course, is also pretty funny as well. Uh, the character of Donovan, he's working with the Nazis, but he kind of, but he al he's also pretty much cons Indy into trying to find his father Henry because only because they need to get this book that has directions to the Holy Grail. And he want, and of course, Donovan wants the grill for himself to give himself immortality. So he pretty much puts on the facade of being an ally when he's secretly doing it for greed. And you know, it's it is what it is. He's pretty much like an evil businessman in a way. So his character is not horrible, but it's nothing really all that memorable. And I, I'll give Steven Spielberg this: <clears throat> this movie just needed to have a villain in it because this movie is really built upon, built up on the back of the relationship between father and son and I think the movie really excels with that it excels with its action sequences it has a more simpler story the tone goes back to that first movie where it's, and, it's just, and to me I think this movie visually and just action wise is much better is better than the first movie you know I love that first movie I do love the last crusade because it has just more things about it that I like you know you have more Marcus Brody you have more Sala the inclusion of Sean Connery just really takes it to another level. And Sean Connery in this movie, he's fantastic. Like I said, he's great. Not only that, we get an opening prologue scene that where we get to see a young a young Indiana Jones. We get to see the origins of the bullwhip. We get to see the, the origins of his of his fear of snakes. And we get to see how he got his fedora. And we get to see that the person that he stole the, the fedora from is actually somebody who gave him a little bit of respect, saying, hey, you did good, kid did good um, now originally the man with the fedora was supposed to be Abner Ravenwood and I'm really start and I really question why they didn't go with that aspect because it really tied everything really really well because the first movie made reference that Abner that Indiana Jones was pretty much an apprentice of Abner Ravenwood and if we would have seen that in the prologue with the man with the fedora who was played by Richard Young if you don't know who Richard Young is he is in Friday the 13th part 5 a new beginning he plays the lead counselor, and he's the one who gives Indiana Jones his patented fedora. Um, now, if this character was Abner Ravenwood, it would have made everything. Made, it would have just tied everything really up, really, really much better, because we would have got the inclusion of Abner Ravenwood. Not only that, we could have seen the beginnings of how Indiana Jones and Marion first came together as well. But <clears throat> as it stands, the prologue is what it is. But it's great because. We get to see a young Indiana Jones, and even from a young age, he looks at artifacts of something that should be in a museum for, and not something that should be used for personal gain or personal greed. So I like all that. And River Phoenix, who played young Indiana Jones, did a really, really good job. Did a really, really good job, too. So I like the prologue. It's great. <clears throat> so, yeah. You know, there's a lot more to talk about with Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade, but those are just my thoughts on this movie. I love it. I think this movie is great, which is why I'm giving it The Last Crusade. I'm giving it a perfect 10, because even though I do have some nitpicks with it, the overall movie itself is just so damn enjoyable, just so much fun. It's tightly written, the fun characters, 
fun action sequences, fantastic directing and production design. I can't give it I can't give it no higher than a 10 because I just love the movie so much and I can ignore all the problems I have with it because this movie's got much more things going for it that really makes it more that really kind of makes up for it in a way. So yeah, 10 out of 10 for Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Let me know your thoughts in the comment sections down below. Like the video and subscribe and I will check you back next time for more.